Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri wa hlul uqdatan min lisani yafqahu qawli. Allahumma allimna ma yanfa'una wa anfa'na bima allamtana wa zidna ilma. All praise is due to Allah. We praise Him, we seek His help and we seek His forgiveness. And we seek refuge in Allah from the evil within ourselves and our evil deeds. Whoever Allah guides, there is none to misguide him. Whoever Allah leads astray, there is none to guide him. I bear witness that there is none worthy of worship except from Allah. And I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is a slave and messenger. Indeed, the truest word is the book of Allah. And the best guidance is the guidance of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The most evil matters are those that are newly invented. For every newly invented matter in the religion is an innovation. And every innovation is a misguidance, and every misguidance is in the hellfire. I'd like to start, like always, by thanking Allah Azawajal for uniting us in one of the house of His houses. Allah Azawajal says, "Wa matallahi la tuhsuha." If you were to enumerate the favors of Allah, you never could. This is our third series on the topic of iman. Our first lecture was on understanding the meaning of iman linguistically, and was intended in the Quran and Sunnah. And we mentioned Iman increases with good deeds and decreases with bad deeds. We mentioned the meaning of Iman linguistically as belief, and the meaning intended in the Quran and Sunnah as belief in the heart, speech upon the tongue, action upon the limbs. We explained using the ayat of the Quran why it is not just knowledge in the heart or just speech by the tongue, and gave examples from the Book of Allah for each one of these things. And we mentioned people that said with their tongue or just believed in their heart and how it did not benefit them in the dunya or the akhirah. And we said Iman consists of pillars and branches. We mentioned Iman Mutlaq and Mutlaq al-Iman, the Iman that is compulsory, which are the six pillars of Iman. And we mentioned the Iman which one perfects. We mentioned that people are on different levels of Iman. And we finished by mentioning the ayat from the Quran, which are proofs for the increasing of Iman. And we gave uh, examples of how to increase one's iman and in our second lecture we covered the first pillar of iman in allah azawajal and we mentioned that iman in allah azawajal requires four things iman in his existence iman in his tawheed al-rububiyya singling him out in his lordship and singling him out in his worship tawheed al-uluhiyya and singling him out in his names and attributes as for singling out uh, allah and his lordship we mentioned uh, tawheed al-rububiyya Rububiyya, the root word which is Rabb, Lord. We mentioned three things are necessary for affirming the Lordship of Allah. That is, to single him out as the creator, the one in control of everything, and the one the possessor of everything. And we broke down each one of these points. And as for singling him out in his Uluhiyya, Uluhiyya, of which the root word is Ilah. And we mentioned that worship consists of commands and prohibitions. And acts of worship are to be carried out with hope and fear. And we mentioned that ibadah consists of everything that Allah loves and is pleased with from actions and speeches, hidden and apparent. And that ibadah is a purpose of our creation. And as for singling Allah Azza wa Jalla in his names and attributes, we mentioned, like Imam Ahmad Rahimullah said, Allah Azza wa Jal isn't described except in a manner that Allah described himself with or his messenger described him with uh, without exceeding the Quran and Sunnah. Like uh, the translation of what Allah Azza wa says, Say, my Lord has only forbidden open and secret indecencies, sinfulness, unjust aggression, associate, associating others with Allah in worship, a practice he has never authorized, and that you say of Allah what you do not know. All of Allah's names and attributes are perfect without any defect. For example, Allah Azza wa is free of all deficient attributes. He doesn't get, get no hunger. And he doesn't get tired, and he isn't forgetful. Like Allah Azawajal says in the ayah, or ayat al-Kursi, la ta'khuduhu sinatun wa la naum. Neither forgetfulness or tiredness uh, affects him. And we said all of Allah's attributes are perfect without any deficiency. For example, he is al-Qawi, the, the all-powerful, the all-strong. This is a strength which has no weakness. And we said he is al-Hay, the forever living. The one that has no end, the life that has no ending. And we said he is the Al-Malik, the king of everything in existence. His kingdom is complete. The names of Allah Azza wa Jal are to be taken by the apparent meaning. Like Allah Azza wa Jal says, when he says about revealing the Quran, he says, We have revealed it bilisanin arabiyim mubin. We have revealed it in the clear Arabic language. So Ar-Rahman means 
the one that is most merciful. Ar-Rahman, Rahma. Al-Aziz means Izza, the one who is all honorable. And Al-Qawi means as Quwa. And they have not to be interpreted other, in another manner. And nobody shares in the perfect names and attributes of Allah Azza wa Jal. That now brings us to tonight's lecture, which is on the topic of Iman bil Malaika. Iman and the angels. The angels are part of the unseen world. And the principle in Islam, when we're talking about the unseen, we need the evidence from the Quran and Sunnah. And we cannot use our own intellect and come up with our own ideas. Allah Azza wa Jal says in the Quran, this is a book which of where there is no doubt, a guidance for the pious, those that believe in the unseen. And belief in the angels is a second pillar of Iman, like in the hadith of Jibreel السلام, when he asks the Prophet وسلم, what is Iman? He says that you believe in Allah and you believe in the angels and so on. Allah Azza wa Jal mentions disbelief in, the, in Allah along with disbelief in the angels. He says, وَمَنْ يَكْفُرْ بِاللَّهِ وَمَلَائِكَتِهِ وَكُتُبِهِ وَرُسُلِهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ فَقَدْ ضَلَّ دَلَالًا بَعِيدًا He said disbelief in Allah, His angels, His books and His messengers and the Day of Judgment is a means of being far astray. Allah Azza wa Jal mentions having belief in them as an act of righteousness. Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَلَكِنَّ الْبِرَّ مَنْ آمَنَ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ وَالْمَلَائِكَةِ وَالْكِتَابِ وَالنَّبِيِّينَ Rather, the righteous are those who believe in Allah, the last day, the angels, the books, and the prophets. And Allah also says, whoever is an enemy of the angels is an enemy to Allah. مَنْ كَانَ أَدُوًّا لِلَّهِ وَمَلَائِكَتِهِ وَرُسُلِهِ وَجِبْرِيلَ وَمِيكَالَ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ أَدُوًّا لِلْكَافِرِينَ Whoever is an enemy of Allah, his angels, his messengers, Jibreel and Mikail, then let them know that Allah is certainly the enemy of the disbelievers. Believing in the angels is a mean of tranquility, peace and trust in Allah Azza wa Jal and a means of increasing our iman in the magnificence and the greatness of Allah Azza wa Jal. What is the meaning of Malaika? Malaika is a plural word for Malak. Malak is a singular form and Malak is derived from Aluka, and Luka, meaning message, that is a linguistic meaning, and was intended in the Quran and Sunnah, like Ibn Taymiyyah rahimullah says, the angels are messengers of Allah Azza wa Jal, they implement his commands. Like Allah Azza wa Jal says, Ja'ilil malaikati rusula, the one who made angels as messengers. And Allah Azza wa Jal says, Allahu yastafi minal malaikati rusulam wa minan nas. Allah selects messengers from both angels and mankind. Iman in the angels requires four things. Iman in their existence, their names, their descriptions, and the tasks that they are ordered to carry out. As for belief in the existence of the angels, and we believe in their existence and don't know the exact numbers of angels that exist. We believe they were created from light. They can change their forms and be seen in the form of humans that can only be seen in their original form by the prophets. They have supreme powers granted to them by Allah Azza wa Jal. They have wings and they don't eat or drink and they also die. As for knowing their, not knowing their number, then we have the ayah in the Quran where Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَمَا يَعْلَمُ جُنُودَ رَبِّكَ إِلَّا هُو وَمَا يَعْلَمُ جُنُودَ رَبِّكَ إِلَّا هُو and none knows the soldiers of your Lord except him. And this ayah is in regards to the angels that will punish in the hellfire. And the Messenger of Allah alayhi salatu wasalam said, when he was ascended to the heavens uh, on the night of Isra al Miraj, the Jibreel alayhi salam took him to the seventh heaven where he seen Bayt al Ma'mur. Bayt al Ma'mur is on the seventh heaven, uh, exactly on top of the Kaaba and the dunya. And he says, then I was shown Bayt al-Ma'mur, Allah's house. I asked Jibreel about it and he said, this is Bayt al-Ma'mur, where 70,000 angels perform prayers daily. And when they leave, they never return to it. And in another narration, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, I see what you do not see and I hear what you do not hear. The heavens have squeaked and it has every right to do so. 
by him in whose hand my soul is there is not a space of four fingers in which there is not an angel who is prostrating his forehead before Allah the exalted by Allah if you knew what I know you would laugh little weep much and you would not enjoy women in beds but would go out to open space beseeching Allah Ibn Taymiyyah rahimullah mentions what is in the Quran and Sunnah in regards to angels and the abundance of them is not limited by number. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in a hadith narrated by Aisha radiallahu anha, angels were created from light. They can take the form of human beings. The angel Jibreel alayhi salam used to visit the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa every Ramadan to revise the Quran. And before his death he visited him twice. And also, like we know in the hadith uh, of Umar radiallahu anhu and other than him, when Jibreel alayhi salam came to teach the religion, he was wearing the, the clothes that were very white, had dark hair, black dark hair, and no signs of travel, and no one recognized him. And when he left, uh, the Prophet sallallahu said, do you know who was the questioner? And he said, that was Jibreel, he came to teach you your religion. He came in the form of a man. And in the story of Maryam alayhi salam, alayhi salam, فَأَرْسَلْنَا إِلَيْهَا رُوحَنَا فَتَمَثَّلَ لَهَا بَشَرًا سَوِيَّا Then we sent to her our angel, and he represented himself to her as a well-proportioned man. This was Jibreel alayhi salam. He was also sent in the form of a man to Maryam before she gave birth to Isa alayhi salam. And also in the story of Ibrahim alayhi salam, when the visitors visited him, that came to destroy the nation of Lut. And surely our messengers, angels, came to Ibrahim with good news of a son. They greeted him with peace, and he replied, Peace be upon you. Then it was not long before he brought them a fat roasted calf. And when he saw that their hands did not reach for the food, he became suspicious and fearful of them. They reassured him, Do not be afraid, we are angels sent only against the people of Lut. As for the supreme powers granted to them by Allah Azawajal, then we know from the punishment that was given to the people of Lut that Jibreel alayhi salam picked up the whole city with the tip of his wing and turned it upside down. Like Allah Azawajal says, and we turned the cities, meaning the of Sodom and Gomorrah, upside down and rained upon them stones of baked clay. As said, Jibreel lifted the entire city up and flipped it over by using the tip of his wing. And also when the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went to Ta'if to call the people of Ta'if to Islam and he was turned out, he said, I lifted my head towards the sky to see a cloud shading me unexpectedly. I looked up and saw Jibreel in it. He called me saying, Allah has heard your people saying to you. And what they have replied back to you, Allah sent the angel of the mountains to you so that you may order him to do whatever you wish to these people. The angel of the mountains called and greeted me and then said, O Muhammad, order what you wish. If you will like, I will let Al-Akhshabayn, the, the name of the two mountains, fall on them. The Prophet ﷺ said, No, but I hope that Allah will let them beget children who will worship Allah alone and will worship none besides me. This angel is called Malak al-Jibal, the angel of the, the mountains. And we said the angels have wings. And Allah Azza wa Jal says, Alhamdulillahi fatir al-samawati wal-ard ja'i lil-malaikati rusula ulil ajnihatin mathna wa thulatha wa ruba' yazidu fil khalki ma yasha inna allaha ala kulli shay'in qadir. All praises for Allah, the originator of the heavens and the earth who made angels and his messengers as his messengers with wings, two, three, or four. He increases in his creation whatever he wills. Surely Allah is most capable of everything. Ibn Masood radiallahu anhu mentions in the tafsir relating to the uh, revelation that the Prophet sallallahu said he seen Jibreel alayhi salam and he had 600 wings. The angels, they don't eat or drink. Like we mentioned earlier in the story of Ibrahim alayhi salam, that when he noticed they didn't extend their hands to eat, he feared them. And as also mentioned in authentic hadith of the Prophet Wasallam, that the dhikr of Allah enriches and suffices the angels from the need of eating. Like mentioned in the story of Ad dajjal Aisha radiallahu anha asked, what will suffice the, the Muslims to nourish them? And he said, what suffices the angels? 
from tasbih, takbir, and tahmeed, and tahleel, meaning subhanallah, walhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar. We mentioned that the angels, they die. Like Allah says, kullu shay'in halikun illa wajha. Everything is bound to perish except he himself. And kullu man alayha fan wa yabqa wajhu rabbika dhul jalali wal ikram. Every being on earth is bound to perish, only your Lord himself, full of majesty and honor, will remain forever. There are names of the angels that we know, and names that we don't know, and there are general names. For the names that we know from the Quran and Sunnah are Jibreel, Mikael, Israfil, Malik, Haruta wa Marut, Munkar wa Nakir, and as for the general names, al mala il A'la, Junood al-Rabb, Ashhad, al zabaniya al muakibat al hafadha and al safara As for the angel Jibreel, the meaning of Jibreel is Abdullah, the slave of Allah. Allah described him as Shadid al quwa extremely powerful in the Quran. And Dhu Miratin Fastawa, one free from any bodily or mind defect. And Allah Zawajal says, Inna hu la qawlu rasulin kareem. Indeed, this is a word brought by the most, a most honorable messenger, meaning Jibreel alayhi salam. The quwwatin in the dhil arshi makin, owner of power with the Lord of the throne, obeyed by the, by the angels in the heavens and trustworthy. He is also named ar-ruh. And Allah Azawajal says, فَأَرْسَلْنَا إِلَيْهَا رُوحَنَا Meaning to Maryam alayhi salam, we sent our, our ruh, meaning Jibreel. تَنَزَّلُوا الْمَلَائِكَةِ وَالْرُوحُ فِيهَا بِإِذْنِ رَبِّهِمْ مِنْ كُلِّ أَمَرِ And the angels descend on that night along with our ruh, meaning Jibreel alayhi salam, with all our commands, with the permission of Allah. And as for Mikael, when the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam would stand up for the night prayer, Aisha radiallahu anha narrates, he would supplicate saying, Allahumma rabba Jibra'ila wa Mikaila wa Israfil. Fatira samawati wal ard. O Lord of Jibreel, Mikael, Israfil, or originator of the heavens and the earth. Imam ibn Qayyim rahimullah says each one of these angels carry out the tasks which give life. Jibreel alayhi salam is responsible for bringing down wahi, revelation, which gives life to the heart. And as for Mikael, he is responsible for bringing down the rain, which brings forth vegetation and fruits which benefit mankind and animals. And Israfil will blow the trumpet, which will bring the dead back to life. So the Prophet ﷺ would supplicate Allah using the, these angels' names. As for the tasks assigned to the angels, then we have a zabaniya. These are the angels in the hellfire. And Allah says, Sanadu zabaniya. And then they call upon a zabaniya. A zabaniya, the word zabaniya, zaban, is taken from a zaban and that means to push and Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu says what is meant by push is because they will be pushing the people of hellfire into the hellfire may Allah protect us from the hellfire and from amongst their names is al muaqibat Allah azawajal says lahu muaqibatum min bayni yadayhi wa min khalfi yahfadunahu min amrillah these are the angels that follow the the children of Adam and they protect them from evil befalling them and there are angels named al hafadha And Allah Azawajal says, وَهُوَ الْقَاهِرُ فَوْقَ إِبَادِهِ وَيُرْسِلُ عَلَيْكُمْ حَفَذَ And Allah is all-powerful over his slaves and he sends upon them protectors, meaning angels, because they protect the, the, the children of Adam from any harm befalling them. And we have angels that are the writers on the left and right. As a misconception, they sit on our, sit on our shoulders Rather, they are on our left and our right. And Allah Azawajal says, Bi'aydi safara. And like we said, uh, the angel Jibreel, alayhi salam, he's uh, tasked with bringing them revelation. Like Allah Azawajal says, Nazala bihi ruhul amin. The ruh al amin descended with it, meaning the trustworthy Jibreel. Ala qalbika li takuna min al Upon your heart, so that you may be of the warners. Bilisanin arabiyyin mubin. Upon a clear Arabic language.
And we said Mikael is responsible for bringing forth uh, vegetation and fruits and bringing down the rain. And we said the angel that is responsible for blowing the trumpet is Israfil. And the Prophet ﷺ said in a hadith, How can I be comfortable when the one with the horn is holding it in his lips and he is leaning forward waiting for the command to blow on the trumpet? And the believers asked the Prophet ﷺ, what should we say? He said, say, Hasbun Allah wa ni'mal wakil wa ala Allah tawakkalna. Allah is sufficient for us and he is the best protector. Upon Allah we put our trust. And there are the angels that are responsible for taking the souls at the time of death. And they are called Malak al Maut. Allah says, say that the, the angels of death cause you to die that have been tasked with taking the souls and then you are returned to your Lord. And like we said, uh, the, the angel of the mountains is called Malak al-Jibal. And there is an angel who is called Malak al-Rahim who is at the womb. And at the time the fetus is in the womb, first it starts at the stage where he says, O oh my Lord, semen. Then he says, O oh my Lord, is a clot. Then he says, O oh my Lord, is flesh. And then when Allah intends to create, he says, the angel asks, is it male or female? Will he be happy or sad? And what will be his provision? So everything is written in the womb for the baby before he's born. And from amongst them are the bearers of the throne. Allah Azawajal says, الَّذِينَ يَحْمِلُونَ الْأَرْشَ وَمَنْ حَوْلَهُ يُسَبِّحُونَ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّهِمْ وَيُؤْمِنُونَ بِهِ وَيَسْتَغْفِرُونَ لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا The ones that bear the throne of Allah Azawajal surrounding him say the praises of Allah and they, they believe in him and they ask for forgiveness for the believers. From amongst them is the bearer of Jannah وَمِنْهُمْ خَزَنَةُ الْجَنَّةِ like Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَسِيكَ الَّذِينَ اتَّقَوْ رَبَّهُمْ إِلَى الْجَنَّةِ زُمَرًا حَتَّى إِذَا جَاءُوهَا وَفُتِحَتْ أَبْوَابُهَا وَقَالَ لَهُمْ خَزَنَتُهَا سَلَامٌ عَلَيْكُمْ تِبْتُمْ فَادْخُلُوهَا خَالِدِينَ And then the people of Jannah will be driven to Jannah. The ones that feared Allah will be driven to Jannah in crowds until they reach the doors and it will be, they will be said to them by the khazanatuha. Salamun alaykum, tibtum fadkhuluha khalidin. Peace be upon you for what you used to do. Enter into it for eternity. Inshallah, we wrap up here. Allahumma ghfir lil muslimina wal muslimat wal mu'minina wal mu'minat. Allahumma taqabbal minna inna ka anta as-sami'u al-alim wa tub alayna inna ka anta at-tawwabu al-rahim. Wallahu ta'ala hu a'lam wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in.